ಸ್ವಯಂಪದೇ Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunya Vari Pasyatyare Satarane Panchakalpa Tarubhisya Kripa Sindhu Devaja Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasati Gauravata Vrindu Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Before we begin today's topic, which is a particular verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, I'd like to just, uh, just refresh everyone's memory, consciousness, awareness that, um, uh, you know, probably some of us are, feeling a little discouraged in how we are being uh, controlled from outside forces on how we organize our life. Of course, this, all this is control is due to some form of prevention <clears throat> and not to get the coronavirus <clears throat> or some kind of sickness that will cause us to become, you know, critically ill. But um, we have to understand that the situation is, um, there's no real clear ending on how this will end or when it will end. Um, just to state history a little bit, if you look at the history of um, of epidemics in the world or pandemics, you might say, you'll find sometimes they last for decades. <laughs> in the end of the 16th century and at the beginning of the 17th century, we had between 50 and 100 million people were killed by the bubonic plague, <clears throat> which was spread throughout Europe. And it lasted for more than 50 years. So, uh, of course, modern medicine has advanced now, but uh, the plague, the present epidemic that we're facing is not so much simply due to this, some kind of disease, but it's due to a greater disease. We use the word disease in this context and it's due to the sinful activities of the living entities that brings about epidemics, wars, pestilence, and various types of, of what we say, Adi Daivik Klesha. Adi oh, Daivik Klesha means uh, imposed by higher powers, or we might say nature. So nature works under the influence of the Lord but nature has been given a certain uh, facility that she rewards the pious and she punishes the impious. So nature has shristi, stisti, pralaya, sadeka. She is, she is called chaya. Chaya means shadow. That's another name for the material energy. She is called chaya. Sometimes we name a girl after that name, Chaya, C-H-A-Y-I-L-Y-A. The Chaya means ch shadow and it refers to the external energy of the Lord. So she's like a shadow to the hand and the hand is God. So the punishment and the rewards that the living entities are meant to receive by the way of their sinful and pious activities are given through by the Lord through the agency of material energy. So she works under the direction of the Lord, but she is also given independence 
to work accordingly. Just like when if you have a uh, if you have a uh, employer, and then he he instructs, guides, and uh, schools his uh, employees to act in a certain way, and then sometimes he leaves them on their own to work according to his already given directions. So Maya is like that. Krishna just allows her you know, full reign in how to punish and reward the living entities. So right now the living entities in the world are getting punished from the sinful activities. Um, it's just like you might say, well, why is it happening now? And what are the sinful activities? Well, it's happening at a certain time because if you understand how disease works, you understand that when somebody contracts a disease, initially they uh, may not show any symptoms, but as the disease remains within the body, the symptoms start to appear. And then as they continue to appear and, and can increase, then it starts to cause problems with the whole body. And then you have sickness, illness, and sometimes death. The best example is a boil. A boil is a blood infection that happens within the body. And when it starts, it, it shows itself to be a little, maybe red sore on the skin. And it may be a little bit of annoying, but it doesn't really cause much problems. But if that uh, blood is not treated, then it increases. And the, the boil uh, on the body itself turns into something very ugly. And then it becomes full of you know, contaminated substances. And then it, it can actually break and spread its substances everywhere, which are contaminating. So when the bubble or the boil of material sinful activities reaches a certain point, it breaks. And when it breaks, then we get what is called mass reactions. And this is what we have now. The boil is break, it broke. And people are getting the reactions of their sinful activities, which have been building up for years. Uh, you can commit a sinful activity and you may not see a re reaction. But as time goes on, it builds and then finally the reaction starts to manifest. The time frame depends on the severity of the sin, and it's also depending on the person, too. So now we have in the world the reactions of sinful activities coming with excessive amounts of cruelty, cheating, lying, deceitfulness, and most of all, killing of innocent animals and killing of innocent babies, abortions, and killing uh, animals for the sake of enjoying their flesh. These are, these are very horrendous sinful activities that cause tremendous amounts of suffering upon the society that engages in these things. So um, when this continues to perpetuate itself, it turns into something ugly. And therefore a country a society, a community, community can never have any peace, no matter how hard they try, as long as sinful activities in the name of, of, of progress goes on. You can't thwart the laws, the laws of God. It's not possible. The laws of God are very strict and very exact. Prabhupada, you would always give the example of the laws of um, the laws of the the state somehow or other you can maybe you can break the laws of the state and you may find yourself not getting caught of course there's a small percentage of people who don't get caught in breaking the law and uh, because the laws are imperfect the people who make the laws are imperfect everything's imperfect so sometimes people don't get caught for their reactions but on on the uh 
on the level of activities within the greater perspective, in other words, under the, under the auspices of God's rule, uh, nobody gets away with anything. <laughs> so therefore, no one can cheat, no one, no one can expect no reactions for their actions. Action, reactions will come, whether they come immediately, soon after, or after a period of time, they come. That's the laws of material nature. And as we said, Maya, uh, she's a shadow and she works very exactly and she is very powerful, extremely powerful. So no one can thwart the laws of God, no one can thwart the laws of nature without getting some reaction from them. So this is what's going on in the world today. So unless people stop their sinful activities, this may, this pandemic may continue to go on and on and on. But the devotees don't have to worry about uh, anything. They just have to take shelter of Krishna and take the opportunity to preach Krishna consciousness to these people. Because that's what's most needed today. People don't know the solution to their problems. They think well, by creating a vaccine that will create some solution. You make one vaccine, you somehow diminish the effects of a certain disease and then you get another disease that comes up anyway. You stop one war and two more wars start. So this is, no one can get out of the, what we say, the ferocious and most horrible reactions of material energy. They are very cruel. Just like yesterday, as we were explaining, we were sitting, I was sitting in my room and about 12, 15 in the afternoon, my whole room started to shake. And I was thinking, what is this? Because I know I'm living in an area which is free from earthquake faults. But it was, it was an earthquake and it was 120 miles from where I was. But my room shaked and things in the room fell down. A couple of pictures fell, some vases fell like that. So that was 120 miles away, 200 kilometers away. So it was a major earthquake. Maybe some of you heard about it, 6.4 where the death toll is mounting now as they find more and more bodies under the rubble. The whole city is practically uh, dis dysfunctional. And they, the city is, it was a small city called Perger, per, Perdrina, Petrina, Petrina. It was just south of, uh, of uh, of Zagreb, maybe about 30 kilometers south of Zagreb. And it got hit really hard. The buildings, everything got smashed. You, if you go on the news, you can see some of the pictures. But this is material energy. And if people remain sinful, they cause material energy to act in these ways. And there's no stopping that. The only way you can stop it is by people have to change their activities. But for devotees, we take compassion upon the fallen souls who are suffering in the material world. We try to do something to uh, relieve their suffering by giving them some transcendental knowledge and more important, giving them an opportunity to free themselves from suffering by introducing them to the chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra, which is so powerful that anyone who chants the holy names of the Lord is completely protected from all dangers in this world. Uh, and one develops a sense of fearlessness as they continue to chant more and more. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to bring that up just to you know, update us on our present 
social and, and environmental situation because um, we all feel a little bit pressured by the present situation. And we have this uh, desire that things will go back to, a, to where they were or maybe a little bit different, but don't count on that. Count on somehow or other remaining Krishna conscious amongst all this and see what you can do to uh, help others become Krishna conscious. Okay, that's a little introduction to the topic. Today's verse is from the, th the second canto, chapter three, <laughs> verse number 17. Ayur Haranti Vaipum Sam Udya Astam Chayan Naso Yasyate Tatshino Nita Uttama Sloka Vartaya. This is a very powerful verse. The Prabhupada also gave class on this verse. Both by the rising and by the setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all good personality of Godhead. So someone please read the purport. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, can I read Guru Maharaj? Please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. This verse indirectly confirms the greater importance of utilizing the human form of life to realize our lost relationship with Supreme Lord by acceleration of devotional service. Time and tide wait for no man. So the time indicated by the sunrise and the sunset will be uselessly wasted if such time is not properly utilized for realizing identification of spiritual values. Even a fraction of the duration of life wasted cannot be compensated by any amount of gold. Human life is simply awarded to a living entity, Jiva, so that he can realize his spiritual identity and his permanent source of happiness. A living being, especially the human being, is seeking happiness because happiness is the natural situation of the living entity. But he is vainly seeking happiness in the material atmosphere. A living being is constitutionally a spiritual spark of the complete whole and his happiness can be perfectly perceived in spiritual activities. The Lord is the complete spirit whole and his name, form, quality, pastimes, entourage and personality are all identical with him. Once a person comes into contact with any one of the above mentioned energies of the Lord through the proper channel of devotional service, the door to perfection is immediately opened. In the Bhagavad Gita 2.40, the Lord has explained such contact in the following words. In the words of devotional service are never baffled, nor is their failure. A slight beginning of such activities is sufficient even to deliver a person from the great ocean of material fears. As a highly potent drug injected uh, intravenously acts at once on the whole body, the transcendental top, uh, topics of the Lord injected through the ear by the pure devotee of the Lord can act very efficiently. Oral realization of the transcendental messages implies total realization, just as a fruitification of one part of a tree implies fruitification of all other parts. This realization for a moment in the association of pure devotees like Shukadeva Goswami prepares one's complete life for eternity. And thus the sun fails to rob the pure devotee of his duration of life inasmuch as he is constantly busy in the devotional service of the Lord, purifying his existence. Death is a symptom of the material infection of the eternal living being. Only due to material infection is the eternal living entity subjected to the law of birth, death, old age and disease. The materialistic way of pious activities like charity is recommended in the Smriti Sastras 
as quoted by Srila Vishwanatha Chakravarti Thakura. Money given in charity to a suitable person is guaranteed bank balance in the next life. Such charity is recommended to be given to a Brahmana. If the money is given in charity to a non-Brahmana without Brahmanical qualification, the money is returned in the next life in the same proportion. If it is given in charity to a half-educated Brahmana, even then the money is returned double. If the money is given in charity to a learned and fully qualified Brahmana, the money is returned a hundred and a thousands of thousand times. And if the money is given to a Veda par, Paraga, one who has factually realized the path of the Vedas, it is returned by unlimited multiplication. The ultimate end of Vedic knowledge is realization of the personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedascha Sarvair Aham Veva Vedyaha. There is a guarantee of monies being returned if given in charity, regardless of the proportion. Similarly, a moment passed in the association of a pure devotee by hearing and chanting the transcendental messages of the Lord is a perfect guarantee for eternal life, for returning home back to Godhead. Madhama Gatva Punar Janmana Vidyate. In other words, a devotee of the Lord is guaranteed eternal life. A devotee's old age or disease in the present life is but an impetus to such guaranteed eternal life. Thank you very much. One of the key words in this particular purport is that the human form of life is awarded to the living entity as a means to perfect their life. Now we hear and we also can understand by our own experience that um, outside the human life, or when we say lower than the human life, animals, trees, plants, birds, they have no uh, intelligence to become Krishna conscious. Although they are spirit souls, just like we are spirit soul, the spirit soul is the same in all living entities' bodies. It is pure, it is full of knowledge, bliss, and it's eternal. But in bodies lower than the human form, the, the chance to become Krishna conscious is not given. So to get a human form of life, as it says here, it's awarded. <laughs> and so it's something that is quite rare to achieve and it's something that is very special in that one can achieve or one can fulfill their desires for eternal happiness. And that means that they can, come, they can awaken their spiritual nature and develop the relationship with the Supreme Lord and go back to the spiritual world. So to get a human form of life takes many, many millions of births. So it's not something that comes so easily or within time. It, usually the normally as is described in the shastras the living entity has to transmigrate from different species of life going through the whole uh what we say echelon of the different levels of bodily existence finally when they get to the human form of life it is really after millions and millions of years <clears throat> before then we have been in all kinds of different bodies. And uh, so we don't really have any idea of what we were or where we were, or what, what was it like in those bodies. That's all completely forgotten because those bodies don't return any, retain any memory. So, uh, but now here we are in the human form of life. And so it's a, it should not be wasted. It's like, Sometimes we, 
you know, you're in the kitchen and you're cooking sometimes. And you, sometimes you let the faucet run unnecessarily, so you waste a little water, but you think there's so much water. Where sometimes we're not careful to waste water. But if we drop some milk or a bottle of milk spills, then we think, oh, that is a great loss. So in the same way, the human form of life is quite rare. And if it's wasted, <laughs> wasted means not understanding what are the benefits of the human being in that form of life. It's wasted in activity simply to maintain the body or try to find happiness through the mind and senses. Then uh, it's like wasting the most valuable thing possible. It can never be regained. And here, the verse kind of indicates a little bit about the importance of what the sun does. The sun decreases the duration of life of everyone. Except, now here's an exception, one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all good personality of Godhead. So what does that actually mean? <laughs> the sun is working on everyone. Everyone is going through life. Everyone is getting older. Each day as the sun rises and sets, uh, another day is gone. So why are we any different than those who live a non-devotional life? because devotees are, are not within the material energy. That is, if we're fully engaged in devotional service, mam chayo vyapi charena, bhakti yogena sevate, sagunan samatityai tan brahma bhuyaya kalpate. Krishna speaks this verse in the 14th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita where he describes that one who is engaged in full devotional service doesn't fall down in any circumstance and can immediately transcend the modes of the material energy and come to the spiritual platform. So on the spiritual platform, <clears throat> there is no question of time. So Prabhupada helps us to get onto the spiritual platform in his explanations of this particular verse, where he says, use your time to chant as much as possible. Use your time to read books. He said, you can sit down and you can read and just read. Read the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam or other related spiritual books uh, given to give it to us by Srila Prabhupada and his uh, followers. You're on the spiritual platform. Although you might perceive your body getting older, Time is not taking away your lifespan. It's actually increasing your lifespan because you are building your gateway to eternal life. And eternal life is our existence anyway. We are eternal. Some people think that if some people act in the wrong way, just like if a person is miserable, and the misery reaches such severity that they can't live any longer. So they decide to take their own life. And they think by ending their, own, their life, they will end their misery. But actually that's not correct because they're only compounding their misery because they'll be giving up. They'll be getting a situation where they have no body in the next life and they'll be stuck in a subtle body, just with the mind, the senses, and the intelligence in a ghostly body. In that ghostly body, they are even more miserable because their material desires are still strong, but they have no facility to uh, fulfill them. Therefore, ghosts are always trying to inhabit the bodies of others so that they can fulfill their desires through other people's bodies. That's why a lot of people are ghostly haunted, especially alcoholics. Alcoholics, people who drink, they're always ghostly haunted. People who engage in excessive sexual activities, they're also ghostly haunted. And sometimes just people in general are ghostly haunted because ghosts are always actively looking for opportunities to enter into different bodies 
and uh, use that body for their own sense gratification. So the point was that um, the living entity is eternal. They can't, you can't stop your existence. You have to exist somewhere. So the idea is to use this body as a stepping stone to eternal life. And that's what it's meant to be. It's not, this body is not meant to find happiness through the mind and senses through by engaging in sense objects. Maintaining the body requires facility to use the, the mind and senses in the necessities which will allow the body to exist in a normal healthy state. But beyond that, <clears throat> uh, endeavors in, in material sense gratification only lead to illusion and greater forms of uh, suffering. So this verse is interesting. You can go down the page and a little bit more and we have see what we can see here. Okay. It's a quite, and Prabhupada talks about, you know, the whole principle of charity. Money given to different types of people brings different types of returns, either in this life or in the next life. So in other words, a devotee is guaranteed spirit, uh, eternal life if they stay engaged in devotional service. But staying engaged means to regularly hear and chant at the transcendental messages of the Lord. These are the essence of the purification of the mind and heart, and it brings immediate happiness and satisfaction with them. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any discussion on these points. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much uh, for the nice class. Nicely explaining the purport, Guru Maharaj. Um, I request devotees if they have any questions or comments or realizations, they can go ahead. Thank you. So uh, we have a question uh, from Janva Mataji on the chat, Guru Maharaj. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, she is asking, can we exist for a better existing? Uh, deciding where to live or our karma will reach us anyway, everywhere. Well, you're, you're, you, there's two things. There's free will and there's the effects of our karma. The effects of our karma push us in a certain direction in, in the way we act and the way we think. But we still have free will. So by the strength of one's free will, one can choose to redirect their, their karmic influences in another direction. But the strength of your karmic influences may overshadow your free will. And therefore, a lot of times people are forced to act the same way they're acting and they can't get out of that cycle either because the strength of their free will is not strong enough to overcome their, their karmic influences or the karmic influences are so strong that we use an example. The example is if you're driving your car along the road and you say you're going about 50 miles an hour and you come to a, a curve in the road if you don't slow down, then you'll find yourself going in the same direction. You won't be able to follow the curve. And you'll be pulled away from the curve. And then, of course, obviously, there's some disaster. So therefore, in order to overcome our karmic influences, we have to slow down and regroup and redirect uh, our life in the way we want to. So slowing down may not always be so easy because the karmic influence is like, is like the gas pedal that's pushing us in a certain direction. So this, this uh, dynamic or this, uh, yeah, dynamic between uh, karma and free will is always playing itself out. 
And therefore one has to be very determined. So in the process of Krishna consciousness, Krishna consciousness is quite easy. It's not a very difficult process. Chant the holy names of the Lord, you know, here and uh, chant the glories of the Lord. Take nice food steps offered to the Lord in devotion. Associate with people who are doing the same activities and develop relationships based on that, uh, these activities. That's Krishna consciousness. And of course, worshiping the Lord in the form of his deity. But these are easy. Anybody can do them. But the influence of our karma, material karma, is still playing on our mind. And therefore, it pushes us to think and act contrary to these spiritual activities. So there's this struggle between our material destiny and our spiritual will. So the spiritual will has to be strong. Karma is very scientific in the sense that it works under the influence of the Lord through the material energy. It's called the, the, the law of action and reaction. So reactions many times manifest themselves from activities that have been that have been done in the past and even in past lives. Sometimes we see people suffer and enjoy in this life from what they've done in previous lives. And that's, that's quite, quite normal. A person may be born in a very wonderful family. Family has wealth, the family has prestige, the family has culture. So that birth means that, that that living entity has performed pious activities in, in the previous situation. And of course, the opposite is also true with impious activities. So no one can escape the laws of karma unless you take to devotional service and then the effects of karma become reduced by the power of one's execution of devotional service. Anything else? Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, we have one more question on the chat uh, from uh, Roberto Prabhu. Um, it is it okay. about amount of devotional activities, but deepness in their facilitation, isn't it? He wants to know that, um, um, is it uh, the, about the amount of devotional activities, but deepness in their facilitation, isn't it? Deepness in the... I, I, I understood like uh, it's a deepness in the execution of the devotional activities uh, um, instead of... Uh, instead of well, we... We can say that deepness means absorption. The more you're absorbed in the activities, the more you're, you're focused on that activity. For example, we have the body, we have the mind, and we have words. So when these three things are all synchronized together in activities of devotional service, that is called full devotional service. Sometimes we do an activity, but the mind is not completely in the activity. That means you're not completely absorbed. Or you, and you also will get uh, an experience according to how much you are absorbed in the activity, along with the mood of the absorption too. So there are two things, the activity and the mood, both. The mood should be to please Krishna, to please the, to please, uh, the devotees. 
and the activity should be sanctioned by the spiritual master. But absorption is relative to your consciousness. Roberto Prabhu, you want to unmute yourself and ask uh, anything else if, uh, if you want to. Yeah, Jai Maharaj, please. The Mahabha Basin is all the Shla Prabhupada. Amazing point here, Maharaj. You're looking so much deep into this fact that devotional service, Maha Mantra, is actually doing everything for us. And we just have to surrender to it. And actually, what happens, you can see even in the holy places, devotees can be here for many, many years doing doing services with their body, but actually never fully surrendering, never actually doing it with the mind, with intention, with meditation, because of these are the Atmika, as you said, Maharaj, because of this influence of karmic reaction that is constantly kind of, a, uh, you know, making them distressed in their minds. And they think this is normal. I think this is normal. And it's actually, you know, but actually we should, as understood Maharaj, we have to understand, okay, my mind is now disturbed. My mind is making me think about other things but i have to as much as possible think of krishna as much as possible absorb myself in the activities and this is how we get purified from this karma and then less and less the mind is going to torture us yeah one of the principles of execution of bhakti is determination so determined to follow the process exactly determined to stay engaged in the process despite obstacles or impediments, reverses. One has to, determination is one of the qualities that are, is required for successful completion of bhakti. And the mind, we speak a lot about the mind. Uh, and the mind we Realize it's not so easy to control. In fact, the more you try to control your mind, the more the mind will try to fight that control. But if you're determined, you can somehow overcome the restless mind by practice and detachment from material sense gratification. As you give up material sense gratification and seriously practice the process, and the mind becomes fixed on the activity. The problem, as you mentioned, people were have been doing it for many years, but still they don't make advancement is the reason why is that they still mix in their desire for material sense gratification with their spiritual practice. And therefore what happens is they get very little benefit from the activity. It's like, it's called Hasti Snam. Asti means elephant, snan means bath. An elephant, a very big animal, when he wants to cleanse himself, he goes into the river and he takes his trunk and throws water over himself. But he's not a very intelligent animal. He gets, comes back on the land and does the same thing with dust. He throws dust all over himself. And again, the bath that he took was practically useless because he just becomes dirty again. So unless we refrain seriously from those activities which take us away from Krishna consciousness, then the activities of Krishna consciousness itself will have little effect. It's like trying to mix two things that don't mix. Jai, Jai Maharaj. And can you, can you say that what is the correlation with determination and enthusiasm? Is there any or? Uh, that's Rupa Goswami's verse from the Pradesh Amrita. Utsahan nishtaya daryat tatat karma pravartana. Uh, what is it? Sangos uh, uh, sadvritis sangos. Yeah, in other words, he, he gives six principles that are favorable for bhakti. Enthusiasm, determination, patience, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, 
avoiding the association of materialistic minded people <coughs> and uh, following in the footsteps of the uh, spiritual master and the great authorities, which give us the process of bhakti. In other words, following the process as given by the, by the spiritual teachers. These six things guarantee success in devotional service. So Rupa Goswami explains first is utsahan. Utsahan means enthusiasm. And then he mentions determination second. So you can be enthusiastic, but if you're not determined, your enthusiasm will not sustain. And if you're not patient, your enthusiasm will not sustain either. Okay, Maharaj, thank you very much. Amazing. I hope that uh, also I'm trying not to indulge in Mahaprasadam, but actually to honor it so I could purify it. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Everybody. Dear Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your holiness. Thank you again for a truly wonderful lecture reminding us of this importance of this human form of life that we have been given. And somehow we have been given this opportunity, this great benediction of uh, receiving the mercy of the pure devotee in this lifetime. So what a great good fortune we have received by Prabhupada's mercy. And especially those born in India, it's a very rare birth and a very pious birth. But somehow we see that so many Indian people, you know, forgetting everything and uh, leaving India, coming to Western countries and simply indulging in all the sinful activities, just like Westerners. In fact, India, as you said, is heading the whole world in cow slaughter and whatnot. So how we can, um, I mean, India, which is supposed to give light of knowledge to the whole world itself is succumbing to Kali Yuga. So how we can reverse all these things because this world is in such a dire condition. So what's the answer? So how, how we can uh, change this trend? Well, what's the answer? Krishna consciousness. Okay. Is there any other answer? <laughs> <laughs> no, there isn't. It applies for everyone, whether it's Indian or whatever country you're from. We, we, we pick on India because India is is the older brother. She's meant to lead the world spiritually and she has given up that position. And that's the sad part about India. But India is now not more sinful than anyone else. In fact, they're less sinful, but at the same time, they're not fulfilling their what we say designated role as as the spiritual head of the world. India's glory is a spirituality. So that's the sad part that moving away from uh, spirituality and moving towards materialism. But still, India still remains the land of Dharma. It's still very strong in many places. But, you know, Lord Chaitanya traveled all over India preaching Krishna consciousness and he made millions and millions of people Krishna conscious just by spreading the holy name. He traveled for six years in fact, he said he made the whole subcontinent of India uh, Krishna consciousness. But, you know, since he's left, then things have gone in other directions. That's only 530 years ago, 534 years ago.
Yes, Guru Maharaj, I really feel that urgency that somehow you know, in Indian, definitely we at least have to tr try our level best to uh, become Krishna conscious ourselves and then help others become Krishna conscious. I uh, remember my mother singing so many devotional songs in childhood and now when I think back, all those things just reflect the philosophy of Krishna consciousness and uh, there's a beautiful song in Kannada which goes Manav Jama Dada Do He Manuja. That means you have attained this human form of life. It is so rare. Now make it successful. And this is exactly what Srila Prabhupada is telling us. Thank you. <laughs> the word Paropaka is an interesting word. It means to do good to others. And so the quality of the human form of life is meant to do good to others. So then you have to understand, well, what is the best thing you can do for others? You can give them food if they need it. You can give them shelter if they need it. You can do so many things to help people. And all these things are good. But the ultimate principle is to help people, allow them to solve their own problems. And that comes on the spiritual platform. So when you give them knowledge, then they can solve their own problems. So the distribution of knowledge is the greatest form of charity. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, in the purports, uh, Prabhupada gives various uh, descriptions of if you give a charity to different classes of uh, Brahmanas and people, then you get different proportions in return. Uh, is it correct to understand uh, that? If you do a, a, a donation for charity for the right purpose, uh, for spreading the Krishna consciousness movement, then that becomes an akarma, which means that it does not yield even good reactions. Otherwise, you have, <laughs> otherwise you have to accept another body to... Uh, to uh... No, 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 no. No. If you give money in Krishna consciousness, <laughs> that's the highest form of charity you could give. <laughs> correct, Maharaj. So, so, but that would not even yield positive uh, reactions, correct? Because otherwise it... Yeah, it, it, it's the most positive thing because it brings you closer to your, to the principle of uh, devotion. Uh, correct, Maharaj. But in terms of, uh, because obviously uh, I, I wanted to clarify in terms of uh, material, uh, so, for example, if you, uh, Prabhupada explains, if you give uh, a charity to a Brahmana, then it comes back in certain, you know, percentage. So, again, it's still material opulence coming back to you in some form or shape. Uh, but if you do... Uh, yeah, that's the He's just talking about the science of charity, that's all. Charity has a certain, certain components to it, according to how it's being used. Even the demons give in charity, because they know they're giving in charity they get some benefit from that. The money comes back. But yeah, so materially, yeah. But if, you know, so say you don't become, say you don't become fully Krishna conscious in this life and you still have to take another birth. So you take another birth, but you gave to so many qualified Brahmanas in your previous life. So then your birth will be good because you'll have the facility of a lot of wealth. So yeah, even if you if you if you go back home back to God, it then then you solve all your problems. There's no need to worry about any kinds of material benefits. But if you come back in another life, then you may also reap the benefits of your previous activities. And this is described in the relationship to charity here. Okay, Mahara, that makes it clear then. Thank you. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. 
we see a lot of people are born in a very good situation with a lot of money and the ability to earn money also. So that's all due to, uh, you know, previous charitable, you know, offerings. That's why it's, uh, it's known within the, the uh, culture of India that people are very inclined to give, to give, uh, you know, give in charity because they know it'll come back in one form or another. But the motivation behind the, the giving also affects how that will come back also. And so if you're motivated by personal gain, that's charity in the mode of passion. If you're motivated simply to benefit the object of your charity, that's, that's uh, charity in the mode of goodness. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any more questions? Performance or realizations? Okay, tomorrow is the last day of the year. And uh, we'll be doing the Bhagavatam class with the devotees from Harrisburg tomorrow. Uh, at the same time, and I think the verse is from the first canto, third chapter, verse number 32, 1332, if you want to look it up for tomorrow's class, and that's on the, it'll be on a different Zoom link. So I think Mother Lavanya, she has arranged for everyone to learn the different links. So that, that has been made public on the, on the conference. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. And we'll see you all for the end of 2020. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Um, this, uh, this year is uh, wonderful with your association. Uh, we spent daily um, uh, with uh, your association. Uh, we got your association and with your classes. It was wonderful, Guru Maharaj, even though it's a difficult period outside. Um, thank you so much for your valuable association, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. You are also wonderful. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Please accept my invitation. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. This whole year with is just like Govardhan Lee. You simply remain safe under the shelter of your lotus feet. And like Lavanda, I just cannot thank your holiness enough. Thank you so much for your mercy to all of us. Mercy comes from the source that's called Krishna. <laughs> he is the mercy reservoir. Okay, Hare Krishna.